Welcome to the Straight Cutting Experience, where we get exclusive stories from growers from across Western Canada about straight cutting canola. Straight combining seems to be taking over the prairies one field at a time, and growers are having a lot of success. But what growers really want to know is, will it work for me, and how do I make sure that I have success too? We've gone straight to the field to find out. We're talking to farmers to get some answers to some of your questions. If you've been wondering about straight cutting, join our discussion with Western Canadian farmers who are sharing their own personal tips and experiences. Today's guest is Lee Erickson of Edgeview Farms Limited. Lee farms near Denalda, Alberta, and he's with us right now. Lee, tell us a little bit about where you farm. Well, we farm central Alberta, a little town called Denalda. So it's south of Camrose, north of Stettler. Um, we farm land that would be called the parkland. Okay, so we're going to talk today about straight cutting canola. Uh, when did you start straight cutting canola? The very first time I straight cut canola was was probably 30 years ago for a custom fella and with 30 year old technology and everything else. And, and I did understand it worked good, but um, we were scared for, for the next 30 years to do it on a large scale basis just because of the varieties and whatnot. We started here the first time three years ago um, and then two seasons ago we we uh, we did a little bit more. We were club root risk area so we've had to switch all our varieties to club root resistance so we couldn't go to the pod seal varieties. The first year we did pod seal variety and then two years ago we did we did just regular um, so in this area would be when uh, like Liberty would have been 241C or 135C and then um, Pioneer Brown 45H33. Um, so those are the varieties, just your regular varieties that we're using. And then this past year we went to a third of our acres and we are moving this coming year, our plans are to do two thirds of our acres. So every year the, the amount of acres on the farm that you're straight cutting is actually going up. Yes. Um, we... Uh, barley, malt barley is a is a huge crop for us here, um, and so our swathers concentrate on malt barley um, because, of course, as soon as you go the malt barley route, you lose the ability to desiccate and whatnot. So, so that becomes our our swathers are concentrated on malt barley. So it takes the pressure off the swathers on the canola side if we can straight cut, and just the the ease of it. And the ability to do it has uh, it, it's it's been a it's been a game changer on our farm, to be honest. Okay, so 30 years ago, you said you did a custom job where you were straight cutting, what, and you said it was kind of scary. Was it scary because just the sh- the possibility of shelling? Well, yeah, that was, and back in the, in that day, it was um, Polish variety that a guy had left too late and then it got so ripe he didn't swath it so it it, um, it wasn't desiccated and we were using um, auger headers uh, no pickup reels um, all that kind of thing but at the time we, we were after doing it I, we did about 600 acres and we, we we learned that it can be done it does work and, it, and it's it's uh, it's actually very uh, it's a it's a nice thing to do with the combines. It it goes through the combines very well and all of that. So, so with that little bit of experience, move it ahead 30 years, um, and it becomes, you know, more recognized and and definitely, the varieties are more more straight cut friendly than they were, you know, that that long ago. Yeah. So what kind of pushed you over the edge in terms of, uh, you know, in the last three years to, to even consider it, right? Because, you know, when you think about going back 30 years and there's a lot of, uh, you know, people talk about how it can never be done. Like what kind of pushed you over the edge? Was it the, the varieties that are now in the market or was it some of the technologies that can be used? What, what was what was sort of the thing that pushed you to, to get you to try it? Yeah, I would say... Uh... Really, a large part of it is is the varieties with the harvest management that's available. Um, I had a friend that that 15 years ago was doing a lot of straight cutting canola, and then a a big storm came along, and he lost probably 80 percent of his canola crop in in a windstorm that was standing. Um, and and then exactly 
the opposite of that, three years ago here we had a we had a huge windstorm, and we lost a lot of crop that was in swaths, and we would never swath here without without rolling it and all of that kind of stuff. But we still had major loss, and there was the odd field that people had left to try straight cutting on, and I went and walked those after the wind, and I said, just a minute here, there's less loss in this standing canola than what there is in my swath canola. And that's really what 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 started pushing me over the edge. And then, then the technology, I went to you know a couple of, of schools on it, talked to other guys that were trying to do it. Um, our draper headers, when you outfit them with pea augers and pick up reels and everything like that, um, they just they handle it very gentle and there's there's very very little loss at, at the harvest side of it. Hmm. So did you see you know you mentioned the minimal harvest losses? Did you see those results right away, or is it something that you know it's taken you a couple of years to to hone your craft, so to speak? You know, I would say we saw that right away. Um, I we haven't seen a huge yield increase um you know could you argue there's a bushel or maybe a bushel and a half an acre yield increase and and you probably could say that but i i wouldn't say that's what's pushed us there by any means because traditionally um except for for time management we we have swathed our canola a little bit on the on the riper side than a lot of what a lot of people have and we so we would be swathing um probably at 60% seed color change. And, you know, a few years ago, people were doing it in the 25 to 30% range. And so we, we, so, and that may be why we're not seeing the big yield advantage, but we are definitely seeing a quality advantage. Um, the green seed is, is much less. Now, in saying that, there's a couple things. We are adamant about, about desiccating at about 70% seed color change. 65 to 70 percent, and uh, and we we use a glyphosate with we are using heat, which is a BASF product, and um, we're finding we definitely need that tank mix. Um, it, it's it's running probably for, uh, at least at least 10 days, and it could easily be 14 days earlier harvest by using the heat and we're getting rid of of the the green stalk and the some of the the low greenness in the plant that causes serious um harvest issues and and storage issues with you don't you don't want some green chaff in that sample when you when you're storing it well yeah if you like you mentioned how easy the straight cutting goes through the canola a big part of that a big part of it going through that uh, combine like butter so to speak is the is the desiccation that you're doing Yes, absolutely. Because without it, um, we just feel the risk of not desiccating because you have to leave it so late. And again, we are in the parkland area, so there's there's two things we're always aware of of, of a heavy frost. You could you could end up, um, you know, hurting the seed and getting locking some green seed in. But you could also have snow. And and this year we did. Desk, or we did harvest straight cut canola that had snow had been snowed on, um, but yeah, we're just. I think you're just minimizing your risk by by desiccation. The interesting thing is we take the dividers off the sprayer. We use the narrow wheels, and uh, the funny thing is, is there's almost no loss from that. And there's we're finding when we when we cut it, it doesn't matter if we cut across it or at an angle or right with the sprayer trucks. You can hardly, by the time you straight cut it, you can hardly see where the sprayer went. So the trampling issue is is just not an issue, which really surprised me. Hmm. So in terms of your your thought process, how, how do you select which fields you're going to straight cut? Well, so far we've been experimenting. Um, traditionally, we thought, well, it would be the, the Liberty varieties, or the non-Roundup Ready varieties that we would be the most successful on because obviously if you use your glyphosate plus your heat on that, um, that that should work best. And it probably does, but on the other hand, we're not, we have 
played with it a little bit, but we're just using the same same tank mix on our on our Roundup Ready varieties and finding they work just as well. Um, so this coming year, we're not even gonna we're not even gonna worry about what variety it is. We're just gonna we're gonna use our our glyphosate plus our desiccant and and uh, spray them and, and harvest as as required. Yeah, well, you mentioned right now you're thinking them already about the coming season. Does the planning on straight cutting kind of start now, or is it a, like for you know when you a lot of there's a lot of listeners here that maybe haven't even tried straight cutting? Is it a decision they have to think about today before even seeding, or is it a decision that can come later in the year? Yeah, I th- I think well I think part of it should start now. Um, a couple of things: if you had a really dirty field, if you had a, a, a a field with some heavy pigweed issues or cleaver issues or, or or even thistle issues, um, that's probably not a candidate for straight cutting. So then, obviously, the, those issues, you start controlling them in your spring springtime. The other thing in the fall, if you had a, had a very um, small crop, like if we had a drought situation where you had a, you know, rather than an average crop, you had a, had a below average crop, I don't know on, on a very light crop, loosely knit crop, I, I would say that's not a candidate for straight cutting because if you did get a big wind, it would start beating itself up, and I think you could see some major seed loss there. Can you talk a little bit about the timing of that desiccant when you when you use it? Yeah, we we go in maybe a little later than, than, than a lot of people, um, and I would say 60 to 70 percent seed color change, not plant color, seed color change on the main stem, and we would much rather be in at 70% rather than 60%. So we go a little bit later. Um, and you definitely do see a difference in the seed size and the seed color um, across all varieties that we've tried so far. So our timing is a little bit later. Obviously, you, you know, you still want to get it when the plants, you know, before an early frost. See, that would be another thing. If you had a really early frost, um, I don't know if your if your desiccating would be as effective. Um, so, you, if, if possible, you want to get get ahead of a frost. So, the, like I mentioned, there's a lot of people listening that have maybe they've been considering straight cutting, but they've been kind of a little bit timid about it. You know, they're concerned, but they're interested. What what advice do you have for first time straight cutters? Well, number one, jump in the jump in and, and do it. Um, and, and I mean, we were the same. We, it took us from the time we considered it till the time we, we really said, okay, let's, let's try 600 acres. Um, that took two years, really. Um, but I, I, I think with the varieties and with the, with the, with the technology on the equipment, it's time to, to get serious about it. So if, you're, if you are worried, you know, you go to a, a, a pod seal variety, try that. Um, you know, pick a pick a decent field that you're not worried about some weed issues or some some maybe even like low lying areas because if you did have mud for your desiccating and whatnot, it would cause a lot of trouble. Um, we we originally went to some of our flatter land because we farm a lot of rolly hills, but we're not scared of the hills anymore. We find it works just as well in the hills. So. But do that kind of stuff. The the from the mechanical side of it, you definitely want to pick up real. You you have to have a P auger. You can't do it without a P auger on your on your traper headers. Um, you could probably, and I and I don't have the experience on it, but you could you could use a, an auger header. Um, I would be a little worried about the shelling loss, you know, from the auger itself, but. Um, definitely on the draper header, you would want to want a pea auger on it. We have not done, used anything special on our dividers. We have the taller dividers, and um, from what we've seen, we won't be going to a to a shear, you know, a rotating shear type of thing on the dividers. We just don't feel it's necessary. So, in your area, there are, are there a lot of guys that are straight cutting now? No, I would say no. Um, a lot of guys looking at it. A lot of a lot of guys watching us for sure, um, and and a lot of guys, 
just ready to try it and wanting to try it and, and gearing up to try it. Like I say, it, it probably the biggest thing is, is, is just get prepared, get comfortable in your mind, and then after that, it's, it's actually quite easy. It's, it's so simple. When we're doing it, we're just saying, you know, why didn't we start doing this a few years ago? But understanding that the varieties are much better as, as we move forward. And that's really the biggest thing that I think uh, can make this work. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us, Lee. Your experience and perspectives are what growers need to encourage them to try straight cutting for the first time. It's all about becoming familiar with what works for your operation and what works best for you. Make sure you visit eggsolutions.ca slash straight cut pod for more information and be able to listen to more of these podcasts. And please follow BSF on Twitter at BSF Egg Solutions. I'm Sean Haney from realagriculture.com and this has been an episode of the Straight Cutting Experience. <music>